Howdy Huskies, today we're going to talk about segment bisectors today, uh, similar to angle bisectors in the previous videos, except today is segments. So we're pretty good with what a segment and an angle bisector is, hopefully if we watched this video previously, it was a short one, so check it out. What's going to be, in, what's going to be important for us today is to really go ahead and take a look at the algebra, so we're going to do a lot of what is called factoring today. So let's go ahead and remind ourselves how to factor. So I'm gonna write some steps over here first to help us out. So the first thing is we need to get it in what's called standard form. So standard form is gonna be ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So that's a fancy way of saying your everything is on one side and it equals zero. So step number two, my friends, is you're gonna make your x. And this should be very uh, familiar to us from Algebra 1. Remember, it's just a graphic tool to help us how to factors. So here you're going to go ahead and do the number you multiply to. And that multiply is going to be your C. And we're going to get that from up here. It's basically going to be the no X term. And then, ladies and gentlemen, your B, which is going to be this middle one, that's going to go down here. So your B is down here. And it's going to be the number you add to. And so what we're going to be looking for are two factors, and that's going to go right here. And so once we find the two numbers that multiply to the C and add to the B, then we can put them into our parentheses like this. Okay, and so then ladies and gentlemen, uh, so then we're gonna go ahead and solve each parentheses and that'll be our step three. Solve each parentheses and then we're gonna do that individually. So we're gonna solve each one of those parentheses individually and then last but not least, you're gonna check. Because even though we have two answers, sometimes two answers work, sometimes only one of them work. And so we got to check that out. Sorry, sports fans to jump around on you. We did. I just did the video and then we found out that we have a bad example. That happens from time to time. So will you change number one into x squared minus x is equal to 12? All right. So now that we've changed it to a number that actually works, let's go ahead and give this a shot. So I'm going to go ahead and I want this to equal zero. So this side needs to be a zero. So to bring that 12 over, we're going to do the opposite. So minus 12. And so we're going to get x squared minus, I'm going to call it a 1x, minus 12 is equal to 0. And notice that that's an x, sorry, an x squared, an x, and just a no x. So that's why we can't put any of those together. And then these are going to cancel out. So now that we have it set equal to 0, which is what we wanted to do, we're going to draw our x. And we're going to say what numbers multiply to a negative 12. So I'm going to put the negative 12 on top. And then add to a negative 1. So I'm going to put the negative one on the bottom. So what two numbers are going to work with that? So the first year, you're always going to say, we need to find two numbers. So let's start with the factors of 12. So we're going to call it the factors of the top. So to make 12, we could do negative one and 12. We could do one and negative 12. We can do six and negative two. We could do negative six and two. And then we can do negative three and four. And then we can do three and negative four. So which one of these, all those different possibilities are gonna to add to a negative one. We've already said that they make 12, so we're good there. And what we're gonna notice is it's this bottom one down here. This is the one that's gonna make that one work. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a three here or a negative four. The order doesn't matter, but then this is gonna become an X plus three. And this will drop down into become an X minus four. And then we're gonna solve them individually. So we set those equal to zero. And we do those because we have that zero up here. So that's where that zero comes from. It comes right there, right there. And so I'm gonna get uh, x plus three is equal to zero. So minus three, minus three from both sides. And I get a negative three. And then we're gonna do x minus four is equal to zero. So plus four, plus four x equals four. All right, and those are our two answers. And if this was a geometry example, we would go ahead and we would check to make sure those work. All righty, so let's do another one here. So I'm gonna move this over, so minus 42, minus 42. 
and I'm gonna get x squared minus 11x minus 42 is equal to zero. And now we're ready because it's equal to zero to do our x. So what numbers make a negative 42? We're gonna see that being a negative number quite often, but it isn't always. And then add here to a negative 11, so minus 11. So what numbers make 42? So let's go ahead and give us some room here. So the numbers that make 42, well, the one that comes to mind is always gonna be six and negative seven or negative seven, oh, sorry, negative six and seven, and neither of those are gonna give me negative 11. So we have to think of others to have a like one and 42. That's not gonna work, two and 21. That's not gonna work. So how about the next one, which is three and 14, or you could do, sorry, negative three and 14. And then how about we do three and negative 14. And then once again, that is the one that's gonna work. So we'll go ahead and write our answers of three and then negative 14. And so I'm gonna get x plus three is equal to zero. And x, well, sorry, I'm skipping steps here. And then x minus 14, when I bring those down, then I'm gonna set them equal to zero. And then we're gonna solve them. So I'm gonna get x equals a negative three. And then when I add 14, x equals 14. And those are our two answers again, and we would check them if we had a chance or if I, we had a diagram to check it in. All right, so we'll go ahead and we're gonna have plenty of chances to factor. So let's go ahead and jump into our segment bisector um, day here. So a segment bisector is gonna be a line segment or ray that cuts, I forgot my that, there we go. That cuts a segment into two equal parts. So it is a line segment or ray that cuts another segment into two equal parts. And that kicker is that it has to be a segment. So if you have a line, we can't cut a line into two equal pieces because a line goes on forever. So clearly we have to take a look and say, all right, this is a line because we have our two arrows here. And then with our dots here, this is gonna be a segment. So now we know that a segment is gonna get bisected. So this is the bisector. So the bisector is gonna cut into two equal pieces just like the angles did. So we'll say that these two pieces are the same. So if this was four, then this would be four. Or we could change that to saying this is 17 and that's 17. Cool? Now, one piece of caution before we go into this is this, can this distance be a negative number? And the answer is no. It can never be negative. So distances can never be a negative answer. So if we get a value for X, that's why we have to check it. All right, so it says that MN is a segment bisector. So we're gonna label just like we did in the previous video. So bisector, so if this is your bisector, that means these two pieces are the same. So we can take these two measurements, this four X squared and this 21 and set them equal to each other. Sorry, the X squared and the four X. So we'll go ahead and have X squared minus four X is equal to 21. So it has to equal zero, just like we practiced. So minus 21, minus 21. And so I'm gonna get X squared minus four X minus 21 is equal to zero. So ladies and gentlemen, rather than always taking a lot of time to make 21, just, or negative 21, just start with good old 21 and see which ones are gonna be close. So that's three and seven and 21 and one. So which ones are gonna be close to negative four and that's that one. And then you can worry about your, uh, your factors a little bit, it's a little bit smarter time uh, management there. So it would be seven and three, and so the seven would have to be negative to make a negative four. So I'm gonna get x minus seven, x plus three is equal to zero. So x minus seven is equal to zero, x plus three is equal to zero, 
So x equals 7 and x equals a negative 3. So here, if we look, I have two answers. And that's okay to have two answers. We got to double check though to make sure they actually work when they plug when we plug them in. So right here, if I'm going to have to check twice. So we're going to check with the 7 first. So when I plug this back in here, I'm going to get 7 squared minus 4 times 7, which is 49 minus 28, which equals 21. And that's what it's supposed to because those two pieces are the same. So this is indeed one of our answers. So let's see how negative 3 goes. So if I take negative 3 and I plug it in over here, I'm going to get x squared minus 4 times a negative 3. Sorry, it should be three, negative 3 squared. So that's 9 plus 12, which is 21 as well. And that's what it's supposed to because we can see right there. So that checks. So in this case, I have two answers, 7 and negative 3. So we're going we're gonna to keep those around. All right, our next one is solving for x. So this is a C. So why don't you try this one? Hit the old pause button and see how you do. All righty, so this is our bisector, as we can see from the example, and you read it and you tried it. So those two are going to be the same. So x squared minus 2x is equal to 15. When I bring this over, I'm going to get minus 15, minus 15. So I get x squared minus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. And so then I'm going to make my x and say what two numbers multiply to a negative 15 and then add to a negative 2. So 15, if we put our factors here, are going to be 1 and 15, nowhere close to 2, or 3 and 5. Oh, that gives us in the ballpark. So let's do 5 and 3. And then remember, it's a negative 2, so that has to be a negative 5. So x minus 5, x plus 3 is equal to 0. So x minus 5 is equal to 0, and x plus 3 is equal to 0. So on this one, we'll add 5, and I'll get x is equal to 5, and then minus 3, minus 3. I'm going to get x equals a negative 3, and those are our two answers right there. So if those are our two answers, once again, we got to check. So let's take the negative 5, and you always plug it into the x because you don't want them to be a negative because you can't have a negative distance. So x, excuse me, negative or a positive 5 squared minus 2 times 5 is 25 minus 10, which is 15. And see, we have a 15 right there, so that one checks out. So let's try our negative 3. So if I take that negative 3 that we got over there and we plug it in, same spot, I'm going to get negative 3 squared minus 2 times a negative 3 which is 9 plus 6, which is 15, and that one checks too. So once again, my friends, we have two answers, and those two answers are 5 and negative 3. So the question we often get asked is, if we have two answers, do we have to write them both? Yes, you do. All righty. So this one is a little bit of a different question. It said, what would the value of y be that would make CW an angle bisector? So what you're going to do is you're first going to go ahead and assume that CW is. Because they want to know what value will make it work, let's assume that it is. You don't often assume, but this is one of those times. So this is a bisector. So if that's the bisector, then these two pieces are the same. So then, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get y squared minus 7y is equal to 30. So this will be when I subtract my 30 over, hopefully you're starting to get the feel of these, you're gonna get y squared minus 7y minus 30 is equal to zero. So we'll make our x and we'll say okay. So this right here is going to be a negative 30 and a negative seven and the factors that make 30 are one and 30 2 and 15, and 3 and 10. 
So I have to get to seven. So three and 10 are gonna work the best. And that 10 is gonna be negative because it's a negative seven. We gotta make sure we add to a negative seven. So I'm gonna get y plus three and then y minus 10. We're still doing the same thing even with the y squared. So we set it equal to zero. So then I subtract a three. And then we get y is equal to a negative three. And then on this one, we'll go ahead and we'll add a 10 and get y is equal to 10. So let's check our two answers. So we'll do a negative three first. So negative three squared minus seven times negative three. So nine plus 21, which is 30. So it works there. So let's try 10. So 10 squared minus seven times 10 is gonna be 100 minus 70, which is 30. And again, that's what it's supposed to be. So we have two answers yet again. All right, my friends, you guys tried this next one. Make sure you're all gravy. All righty. So we have our TS is gonna be our bisector. So let's go ahead and label. So this is our bisector. So these two pieces are the same. So x squared plus 2x is equal to 24. So minus 24, minus 24. And I'm gonna get x squared plus 2x minus 24 is equal to zero. So then we'll do our x. So minus 24 and a positive two it's gonna give me six and four for my factors. Cause 24 would be one and 24, two and 12, four and six and three and eight. Lots of factors for 24. But I'm gonna to need to make that a negative four for this one to work. So x plus six, x minus four is equal to zero. So we'll set those equal to zero just like we've done a bajillion times I feel like at this point. So x plus six is equal to zero and x minus four is equal to zero. So minus six, minus six. Doing that opposite, I get a negative six. And then this one will be um, plus four, plus four. So we're gonna get x is equal to four. All right, two answers, we gotta check. So let's plug this in. So negative six squared plus two times negative six is gonna be 36 uh, minus 12, which is 24, so that one works. And then this will be four squared plus two times four is 16 plus four, which is also 24. So that one works too. So once again, we have our two answers. Pretty fortunate to get all of them that work every single time, but that is not always the case. All right, so we have our last two here. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and say, look at our picture right here. It says that AB is a bisector. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my bisector right here and say that these two are the same. But I don't have any information there. That information is hiding up here. So I'll go ahead and put that this is x squared plus three x. And then this bottom one, PF, is gonna be seven x plus 21. And we already said that because it's a bisector, those are the same. So x squared plus three x is equal to seven x plus 21. So let's go ahead and minus seven x, minus seven x. So I'm gonna get x squared uh, minus four x is equal to 21. And then minus that 21 over. And then we have x squared minus four x minus 21 is equal to zero. Alrighty, so now we're ready to factor this. So it just took an extra step to make sure it was equal to zero. So what two numbers multiply to a negative 21 and add to a negative four? Making sure I'm still recording. It says I'm still recording, that's good. Alrighty, so that's gonna be a seven and a three and then make it a negative seven because what's 21 
1 and 21 are the factors that multiply to 21, or 3 and 7. Cool? So we're going to do x minus 7, x plus 3. Take each of those and set them equal to 0. Like we're doing right now. And so then we do plus 7 plus 7. And we get x is equal to 7. And then minus 3 and minus 3. x equals negative 3. All righty. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look and make sure we have our two answers. So if I plug in seven, I have an X here and an X here. So I got to plug it actually into both spots. So here I would get seven squared plus three times seven, which is going to be 49 plus 21. And that's going to add to 70. So this bottom one better be 72. So seven times seven plus 21 is gonna be 49 plus 21, which is 70. Okay, we got 70 in both cases there. So this one checks out. So let's double check. I'm gonna erase this because I wanna make sure we have some space and try it again here with this negative three. And then this is where, like I said, we can't have a negative distance. So I'm gonna get negative three squared plus three times a negative three. And then this will be seven times negative three plus 21. So I get negative 21 plus 21, which is zero. And then this is nine minus nine, which is also zero, okay? Your distance should probably not be zero either, okay? So we're gonna say our only true answer here it's gonna be that seven, or else why would we put a number in if it was gonna be zero? So that's not gonna work out for us. Cool, so in this case, that's our only answer. So I'm gonna put only answer. Because we don't want a distance of zero in our diagram, that wouldn't be very helpful. All right, you're gonna try this E, and then we'll do it together. Make sure we got the same answer, and you're good. So hit pause and give it a shot. All right, it says PM is my bisector. So I'm gonna write bisector right there. And I'm gonna put these two are the same. And so it tells me that LQ, pew, pew. so this is my X squared plus seven X. And then QN, QN is right there. That is my five X plus 48. So we're gonna set them equal to each other. So X squared plus seven X is equal to five X plus 48. So minus 5x, minus 5x. And so I'm gonna get x squared plus 2x is equal to 48. And then from there, I'm gonna move this 48 over. So minus 48, minus 48. And so we're gonna get x squared plus 2x minus 48 is equal to zero. So we'll do our x saying what two numbers multiply to a negative 48 and add to a positive two. So negative 48, positive two, and then 48, we'll do our factors over here. So 48 and one, not even close to two. Two and 24, add or subtract them, no way. Uh, four and 12, getting closer, but still not there. How about six and eight? There we go. But again, they need to make a negative 48. So one of them has to be negative and add to a positive two. So I'm gonna make this one negative. So then we'll go ahead and have x minus six, x plus eight is equal to zero. So x minus six is equal to zero, x plus eight is equal to zero. So plus six to get our x by itself and then minus eight to do the same in the other equation. And so those are gonna be our two answers and let's double check. So six, I'm feeling six is okay. This negative eight, I wanna double check and I'm actually gonna double check that one first. So let's go ahead and plug that in here. So five times negative eight plus 48, that's gonna be 40, excuse me, a negative 40, plus 48, which is gonna go ahead and give us eight. 
Okay, so it's not zero or negative, that's a good sign. So let's plug it in this top one and see what we get. So then here, I'm gonna get negative eight squared plus seven times negative eight, which is 64 minus 56, which is also eight. So look, we got eight on both sides. So the difference being, in the other one it was zero, so this one we're good. Okay, sweet, so this is one of our answers. So now let's try that six. So I'm gonna erase this and plug in the good old six here. This is gonna be five times six plus 48. Put a 48 right there. So this will be 30 plus 48, which is 78. So hopefully this is also 78. So we'll do six squared plus seven times six. So 36 plus 42 is 78, booyah. So let's go ahead and say that both of these answers work. We're good, but just highlight this. This was 48 and then the other answer was eight and that's okay, all righty? And that's okay that those aren't the same. But ladies and gentlemen, I know this was saucy with some algebra. You gotta just practice, you gotta just try. So give it the old college try and we'll see you next time. Thank you for being patient. We'll see you later.